Welcome to the Quiero.com Spanish Property Podcast, where we interview real people who recently purchased a home in Spain. They tell us what worked, what didn't, and what they'd do differently next time. I'm Beth Davison, and today I'm speaking with Ivan, originally from Newcastle, who purchased a two-bedroom apartment in Formentera del Segura, Alicante. Just wait until you hear about how a change in budget affected the options available to Ivan and how his dream property has meant holiday options for the whole family. Ivan worked with estate agent Inter Property Sales and Lettings to find his dream home in Spain. Check out the show notes at quiero.com forward slash podcast to find links and resources mentioned in this episode. Hi, is that Ivan? This is yes. Hello, it's Beth here calling from Quiero to talk about your property ventures. Ah, hello, Beth. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Good. If you wouldn't mind, just tell me what you do um, and whether you buy or rent your property and sort of when that all happened. Well, I'm a European sales manager for a healthcare company. And my wife and I decided that we wanted to buy somewhere abroad that we possibly in the future may retire to. At the moment, we don't rent it out because we have just purchased it last month and we plan to use it for six months a year in 2018 and then rent it out as a, a long-term let for six months and keep it for three, four months at a time for the family. And uh, that's where we are at the moment. Fantastic. Okay, so it all closed a couple of months ago, did you say? Yeah, we, we closed the deal and made the final payment to the property at the end of October. Brilliant. So it's all kind of quite new for you guys. How long did the whole process take? Oh, seven weeks. Oh, wow. Super fast. Yeah, seven weeks. Yeah. Fantastic. So why did you first decide on Spain? Uh, we've always liked Spain. We like the Spanish culture. We like getting into the, the way in, in Spanish villages and small towns and, and trying to mingle with the, the locals. And... Uh, we think it's in the Costa Blanca in itself. It is, it's got a microclimate. It's nice and warm most of the year round. Very little rain. And the people are just lovely. And that's the sort of thing that we want to eventually retire into. Lovely. Okay, so and whereabouts exactly is it? Explain to me. It's in Formentera do Segura, which is in the Costa Blanca. It's half an hour from Alicante Airport and 40 minutes from Murcia Airport. So it's in between... Easy transport links. It's five minutes from the motorway by car. It's a really medium-sized town. It's 4,000 people and uh, 80% Spanish, 20% English. It's a really nice place. Oh, lovely. So there's a nice mix. And was that, you said it wasn't originally where you were kind of thinking or, or you had something slightly different in mind? Yeah, we thought we'd look at Torre Vieja, but when we went to Torre Vieja, it was too busy. Too many British, I suppose, and, and many other nationalities. And we also looked uh, at a few other places, namely Villa Martin, places such like Playa Flamenca, but they just weren't for us. They were too British for us, and we wanted something more, more secluded. Fantastic. And when you go over there, how long do you kind of tend to stay for? Well... In the next two, three years, we plan to spend three and four months at a time there, as I can base myself there in my job as well. So, Oh, that's great. So you'd kind of work from there as well? I can do, yes, yes. Because I cover Europe, I can actually establish that as my base as well and just fly from Alicante to different places in Europe. Brilliant. And I, your job must give you a great kind of understanding of Spanish culture anyway. Yeah, well, I see many cultures and uh, everyone's different. But the Spanish people are just nice, nice people. And their acceptance of uh, people trying to learn languages with them and, and speak to them in their tongue rather than just being English and, and speaking English, they appreciate that more. Yeah, fantastic. Well, so when you first started the search for your dream home, what did it kind of look like in your head? What were you looking for? Hmm. We were looking for possibly a one, two bedroom apartment I suppose or, or whatever we could get for a budget and uh, we started looking at places online and the internet with through different people. Fantastic and so was it difficult to find that specific property? You said you went on some viewings how many do you think you kind of saw before you found your dream place? 
Well, we visited about 11 different properties. We visited four in Torrevieja, and then we visited around another seven with inter-property sales, and uh, decided we had to up our budget. And upping our budget by a few thousand euros actually made a big difference. And we actually stumbled upon the place that as soon as we walked in, we thought, this is it. And that's how that concluded. Okay, so the budget thing... I mean, you obviously went in with a specific number in mind. Yeah. And you told your agent that number and then they kind of, what, looked around that total? Yeah, he found two or three places uh, within the budget originally, which was, I think it was, was £50,000 it was, but we increased that to £60,000. And the ones at 50000 and just below, they were very, very small. And then they said, oh, OK, we realise that, you only get what you pay for sort of thing at the end of the day. Yeah. And uh, and he showed us a couple of others uh, when we increased the budget. And as I say, when we walked into the apartment we now have, it just sprung out and said, yeah, this is the place for you. And that's what we did. When both my wife and I were totally decided. We never said anything to each other. But as soon as we we come out and we discuss things, it was it was evident that that was a place for both of us. Lucky you agreed. <laughs> yeah, very lucky, very lucky. No, but it sounds like it's nice when you find the right place and it kind of just fits and you know. It definitely is, yeah, it definitely is. It makes a big difference. I mean, we walked into the property and everything was done. You know, the people that had the property that we bought from had it immaculate and there was nothing to do to it at all. When we, when we, now we've got it and it's left everything in place for us that uh, we know where everything is that guarantees for TVs and things like that's fantastic Oh brilliant so there was kind of minimal hassle just from a kind of practical perspective as well Yeah there was no hassle whatsoever I mean the price was agreed and uh, then it was on to the solicitors making the down payment and and then on to the notary at the end of October there where it was all done and dusted within a couple of hours. It was fantastic. I was going to ask about the process. So I think for some people, possibly, it seems quite intimidating. You've got, well, different languages and language barriers, different taxes, mm. finances. How did you find grappling with all of that? Well, initially, I had printed something off from the internet about the buying in Spain. And it, it laid out sort of thing, you know, once you have a purchase price and you agree a purchase price, and it said you should add between 13 and 15% on top uh, to take in uh, with taxes. Uh, 10% of your your sale actually goes in tax to the government. And then you have your estate agent fees, lawyer's fees, land registry, everything, and your NIE numbers, which you have to obtain as well before uh, you can actually purchase a property and also the Spanish bank account. So we had the solicitor that was lined up with uh, what Interproperty Sales suggested this this solicitor that was uh, Sun Lawyers in Lazenia, who were very, very efficient and did everything from the start to finish for us. And, uh, and in between, they kept us up to date with how progress was being made by via email. And it was fantastic. It was absolutely fantastic. Brilliant. I think I know the answer, but I was going to ask you what your agent was like. You've mentioned them a few times, Interproperty Sales, and they sound like they were really, really helpful. He went above and beyond what anyone else was doing. I mean, we, we had met another agent, as I say, prior to that, who was showing us around in Torrevieja, but we are more interested in getting a sale and just saying, look, we'll take care of things if you sign in the sort of power of attorney to us, we'll deal with it all and you know, hold on. You know, <clears throat> and then we had uh, Interproperty lined up as another agent and, uh, you know, asked some lo- plenty of open questions as to what we were looking for, our budget, uh, what our lifestyle was, you know, why, where we wanted to be and everything else. And he, he pulled out some properties and took us, as I say, initially to the ones that are the, the lower end of where we were. And it was evident, and he says, look, these are small, mm. but you've asked for these. So he showed us, and we said to him there and then, not good enough, Nigel, we, we want more. And uh, he said, okay. He says, I'll line up some more properties. 
and it would uh, instruct them, to, you know, to we'll go ten ten thousand pounds more. And uh, he showed us some more, and he said these are sort of things that you get. But he also went uh, out his way to picking us up in the morning, staying with us all day. He's even buying us lunch. Uh, he did everything. It seems so different from the buying process in this country. Did it feel very different? Uh, it felt very, very different. It felt very, very different. I mean, in the UK, everything is dealt with the lawyers. You're getting the same papers and that's it, it's done. But over there, you need someone to take care of. Uh, I mean, we didn't know about the Spanish bank accounts then, but an inter-property took us to the, the bank and uh, he made the appointment for us to sit and go through all the, the the process of opening a bank account, which is very laborious in Spain because they, they go through everything. There's lots of signatures to uh, to make and uh, a lot of, a lot of paperwork. And uh, I would never have known that that was a process you had to go through. And then the, for the NIE numbers for your Spanish identity, this was all sorted out, as I say, through into property and the solicitor. So everything was taken out of our hands and, and dealt with by into property on our behalf and at no extra cost. He had his fee at the end of the day and uh, and he went above and beyond uh, what I've ever seen by with any estate agent. I was really, really impressed with him. Wow, fantastic. My next question is, um, what did you find the most challenging? But it sounds like you might not have had too many challenges. No, there weren't too many challenges at all. Uh, as I say, we were introduced to Formentera, Del Segura. Uh, Inter probably said that he knows it's a nice village, but because it's more inland and you get more for your money. And to be fair, it's pretty central to everywhere. Ten minutes from the beach if you want, in the car. There's bus, bus routes, the motorways there as well. Uh, plenty of restaurants and everything in the village. The, the, the whole place and Everything is, is fantastic. I'm, I'm still over the moon there. It's, it's still quite ecstatic about it. It's hard to believe I keep pinching myself. <laughs> and if you were giving advice to someone doing what, you're, what you've done, what would your kind of strongest bit of advice be? I'd say research properly. Don't just jump into any estate agent. Make sure you know the process before you go as well and have a, an outline of exactly what you want to spend and possibly a better idea of where you want to to reside at the end of the day. But my recommendation, if I, if I can make one, yeah. would be don't look past inter-property sales because it goes above and beyond anything that I've ever seen, even in the UK, to help. He's just a fantastic guy and his team are fantastic as well. They do everything for you. Brilliant. And lastly, I just want to talk a little bit about Spanish culture, which obviously was important for you. Um, and that was something that you wanted to kind of be a part of. So what do you love most about being a part of that culture? The gather, the, the fiestas, everyone gets together every every month or so on. There's different fiestas. Uh, everyone talks to one another. We actually, the week we spent there after buying the property, we're walking in the street and the locals are saying hello to you walking down the street in Spanish, you know, hola. And it's just, it's just a different, totally different way of life, relaxed. They know how to live and that's what we want to be part of. Fantastic. And um, do you get to take your friends and family over there? Is this something you've introduced to other people? Yes, we will be taking a, one of our sons over in March when we go. In, in January, just myself and my wife will go. Then in March, we'll take one of our sons. And then in May, my son and his girlfriend are going on their own. And in June, my other son is going with his girlfriend. And then in May, my mother and father-in-law are coming with us. So, yeah, the whole family will be introduced. Brilliant. It's, I'm glad that you get to share it with so many people. Well, I think that is pretty much it, unless there's anything you'd like to add. But I think we've covered everything. No, that's fantastic. I'm, I'm glad you phoned and uh, it's nice to, to tell other people about it. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much, Ivan. I will let you go. Have a lovely rest of your day. You're very welcome and thank you for calling. No worries. Cheers. Bye. Cheers now. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening. 
And thanks to Ivan for sharing his experience and into property sales and lettings for their help to make this episode possible. I particularly like the sound of the Fiesta atmosphere and how often Ivan is able to share his property with his sons. If you've liked what you've heard, you can search this agent's properties and more on Quiero.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. This podcast is produced by Quiero.com and our mission is to connect you with estate agents and properties throughout Spain. Whether your dream home is a rustic farmhouse surrounded by olive groves or a lock-up-and-leave apartment on the seafront, you'll find everything you need at Quiero.com. If you've enjoyed this episode, we'd really appreciate your five-star rating on iTunes. It helps us reach and connect more people with their dream home in Spain. And whenever you're ready, here are four ways we can help you. Ask a question by emailing podcasts at Quiero.com. We'll try and answer them all in an upcoming Q&A episode. Get a location guide by emailing podcasts at Quiero.com. We'll reply with the latest data and information on the areas you're interested in. Calculate your budget. Simply visit Quiero.com forward slash budget. Enter two numbers and you're done. Be our guest. If you've already purchased your home in Spain, we would love for you to share your story on the podcast. Just email podcasts at Quiero.com and we'll take it from there. Tune in next week when I speak with Linda from Hull. She purchased an apartment on La Torre Golf Resort, Mercia. And I can't wait to tell you about just how fast the buying process was for her, despite never having even been on holiday to Spain. I'm Beth Davison, and you've been listening to the Quiero.com Spanish Property Podcast. I'll see you next week. Bye.